Well guys, I know what this is already. Um, I've already pulled it out, just placed it back to film it. Just to show you how I actually found it. Because I didn't actually have my camera on me, I left it in the car. But check this out guys, this is the way I found it to start with. And I thought, oh, it looks like a, sorry about the wind, it looks like a cart plate. It's like, damn, turned it over, oh my goodness. It's a saddle maker's badge from the mid, well, it could be late 1800s, really early 1800s. It's made of lead, so it's, I'm very, very surprised it's in not bad condition. And that is a beauty. Really happy with that one. Well, guys, here it is all cleaned up. Absolute beauty. It's um, it's lead too, so that's in re remarkable condition. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, H.J. Griffith Saddler Beverly. Western Australia so that is a really good find guys that is awesome and I'll show you the back and you can see where it used to attach to the saddle so um, what an absolute awesome find that one well guys I wish I dug this one live but I didn't um, I've cleaned it up already and it's a 1800s um, what they call Bennington's marble and it's a clay marble that's been fired and it's actually really wonky like really wonky and uh, as you can see it is really crude so mid to mid 1800s i would say and you can see where it's been resting against the other ones in the kiln and yeah quite a cool marble to find actually so yeah bennington's clay marble before they had the glass marbles mid 1800s Pretty happy with that. well guys this was an unexpected find i was just digging a target and it turned out to be a fork and then this is there this is about 1950s area It's half a one, but it's a fish, a koi or something. Yeah, it would have been another half on there, but heck, that'll clean up and display well and sit nicely on the on the shelf. That's cool. A <laughs> fish it feels like plastic or bakelite. I don't know, but yeah, this spot here is about 1950 spot, so that's pretty cool. It'll um, clean up, and I'll show you how. Well, there it is, guys. Cleaned up, came up a treat. Yeah, 1950s, I would say, fish. It's amazing what you find at these places. Probably do a bit more of a clean actually, but that's uh, pretty good. Uh, nice. And yeah, display quite well just sitting there on my shelf. Hey guys, well I've already dug this a while back. I've just come home and I didn't film it because I didn't think it was anything really worth filming for. But it's a little tiny, look like a little beer bottle, miniature thing. And um, I remember someone asking me a while back um, if I found one to let them know. Um, so I showed someone just about an hour ago and they said yeah they were about 60 bucks people were actually wanting them so um i said you can have it um but he's already got one so yeah i'll clean it up and I'll probably go for start so i'll probably sell it for 30 bucks i don't care 20 bucks even i don't care but anyway i don't really collect them but that's pretty cool hey guys hope you can hear me but run the shade of this tree down by the avon river and as you can see there there's a bit of a bottle so i thought i'd come right under all these branches and uh, got myself a plate I could see some writing, so I have no idea yet what we've got. Uh, whoa. Okay. Hey, something Armstrong. Oh, Beverly. <laughs> We're sort of, sort of uh, just north of York, actually. But anyway, that that's good. That is awesome. Probably off a old milk churn, I would say. Nice. That's a, that's a really good find. Happy with that. And here's the nameplate, guys. A.M. Armstrong Beverly. That's for 18 and a half. I think that's for the uh, milk, um, sort of metal milk jug container they used to send on the train uh, to get filled up, as far as I know. Um, the other side, you can see it's uh, yeah, it's been attached to the to it, but yeah, really cool. That's a nice find, turn of the century, I reckon, maybe earlier. Who knows? Quite nice. Research the name and see if we can give it back to the family. That's uh. First priority, if we can't find much there, then I'll Biggest one live. I can see it already though. It looks like a badge of some sort. So I haven't turned it over yet. Let's get it out and we'll have a look. It's got the pin on. Oh, it's a little um, a little bow tie or something. That's pretty cool. It's in great condition too. Yeah, that's a nice little pendant or whatever it is. That's cool. That's a nice little find. We'll keep going, guys. I think there's still a signal in the hole. Well, there you go, guys. It came up quite good. Gave it a nice little clean. I don't want to put too much pressure on that uh, enamel. Might come off. Um, I would say with the stuff found there, 1910, 1920, little brooch. And check out the back. And even that pin still works. So a bit of gold gilt on it. Yeah, nice little brooch, that one. 
Well guys, there's another signal in, in the hole and I can sort of see something there, but this to this. Awesome. Well, it's got a hole in it, like it was made for a pendant or something. 1880 something. Could it be the 1888 Jack Ripper? I don't know. Let's check the hole. I think there's another signal. Another coin spill. Awesome. Look at the friggin' hell, the condition that's really good. And that's an 1896. Well, that's cool too. There might be another signal in there. But that's it, guys. We'll clean them up better and we'll show you how it comes well, together. Guys, here's the two pennies all cleaned up. And um, first one's 1897. 1896, sorry. Second one is 1881. And it's got something weird going on there, which I don't know what happened. But when I turn it over, you'll see what someone's tried to do. I don't know what was going on. Yes, yeah, for nice uh, Victorian era pennies, and I'll turn. And you can see the later one there. You got Queen Victoria's bail head. That was pretty close to when she was about to pass away. She died in 1901. Now this is the other, the other one, which is weird. They've center punched it, but they've, I don't know what they've, what they've done with that. But um, yeah, a couple of nice Victorian pennies for the collection. Hey guys, only a hop, skip, and a jump from where I found the two pennies and that pendant. And I've just dug out another little pendant. It's probably a religious one. Probably have Mary on it or something like that. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Well, that's pretty cool. And then the other side will have maybe a saint on there or something. Can't make it out. But yeah, that'll be pretty, pretty old. Nice little find. Excellent. Let's keep going around this area, guys. Well guys, just giving it a good clean up and it came up really, really nice. As you can see here, it came up really good. So it's all Latin around the outside. I haven't looked it up to see what that means yet. And I'll show you the other and side. Here's the other side. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, pray for us. So I haven't looked it up yet. I'll try and find out a bit of info. And these were given to visitors to the Vatican in the late 1800s. Um, and they come in all different uh, saints and different styles of religion, uh, religious significance. So, yeah, that's really Well, really guys, cool. didn't dig this one live, unfortunately, but we got ourselves an interesting button. It says uh, Glasgow, long way from home. Given a wipe off already so we can read it. And um, I'll try and find a bit of info about it. Definitely a long way from home here in Western Australia. We'll clean up and uh, find out a bit more about it. Well guys, found out a bit of info and the WM Herbert button, Glasgow, um, it's listed in the 1874 Glasgow directory. Um, as a tailor. Um, yeah, he used to make suits and whatever else. And um, yep, so we've got a date for it, around about 1874. So that's when he was working and the location I found it that is uh, a lot of old stuff there. So yeah, that's quite good. Nice little button from back in the day. Well guys, digging around this tree here. Uh, that's because of this medicinal bottle or something. And um, this will be early 1900. Painkiller. That's pretty cool. I think I've dug these before actually. Yeah, vegetable. That's pretty cool, early 1900s, maybe late Victorian. Well guys, sorry about the lighting, but I just ran out of time. And there she is, painkiller. The old quack cure that did absolutely nothing. Nice colored bottle. Yeah, I don't know what the vegetable is, vegetable painkiller. Put out a label on that side. And uh, yeah, Davis. I've dug these in Coolgardy, so these must have been a bit of a popular um, chemist bottle back in the day. Yeah, so it will go nicely on the shelf. Well, guys, just digging through here, and it could be a coin. No, it's not a coin. Oh, a pocket watch. Back. Oh, it's got some decoration on it. I can't make out much there, but um, we'll have to clean that up, guys. And that looks like it might have something pretty cool written on it. Or I can see a horse and a person, I think. But anyway, clean that up and check it out. Well, guys, gave it a bit more of a clean up, and you can definitely see a horseshoe shape, a guy sitting on a horse. 
Um, that's pretty cool. I'll give this a major good clean up, a really good tumble and everything. And I'll actually gold gild it because on the back you can see where it used to be gold gilt. And that'll go really nice in the display. So, um, yeah, guy riding a horse, a horseshoe, all about good luck. So that's pretty well, cool. Well, guys, been in the tumbler for uh, about eight hours and we've gold plated it to what it would have been like back in the day. And uh, needs another coat of gold, uh, gold plate. But that's it, guys. It's a nice uh, guy riding a horse with a lucky horseshoe. And uh, pretty detailed, but you give another coat of gold plate and that should be good for the display. Yeah, nice little find. It was really crusty at the time, but now it's uh, looking pretty hey good. Hey guys, super high tone and we've got ourselves the infamous 1851 penny. I reckon it's 1851. Queen Victorian on the bottom there, it should be. It is too, 1851. Good bit of history, guys. Is uh, 1852 the convicts came over from England to Fremantle and these are actually really low mintage but we find so many here in Western Australia they all came across on the convict ships and uh, they're always in great condition and always 1851s so they came over one year later with the convicts to Fremantle prison awesome well guys here it is all cleaned up absolute beautiful great condition and we left the patina on it we're not going to tumble this one and on the back Queen Victoria, 1851 down the bottom. Yep, big penny, this one's quite thick, quite large, and that was a nice find. Um, over 170 year old coin, very nice. Well guys, came up pretty good. The tumbler just failed on me, so I need a new tumbler now. But yeah, there it is, nice little uh, early 1900s brooch. Little butterfly found on a vacant block on the surface. So I don't think there's anything written on the back. And there's a lot more of a tumble. As you can see, it's still pretty dirty, but it will come up quite nice. Yeah, very nice little brooch. Well, guys, that was a first. <laughs> Metal detecting. And I physically got attacked by a little marsupial. And it's charging at me and attacking me. So dug a target nice and deep here. It's a super, super old. Oh, watch this thing. It's going to attack me again. I'm going to get some film this time. No one will believe me. Bandicoot. Attacked by a bloody bandicoot. Oh, look at that. And it's coming at me. I'm going to get some film. It is just over there. There it is. There it goes. Like a little... Fast as anything, man. It ran at me flat out. Tried to bite my legs, ran off in a hurry, then came back and tried to bite me again. Bloody funny, but super old, 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 old half penny. Now, gotta watch this thing. Yeah, I'm getting out of here. This thing's crazy. It's George the Fourth, and it's 1827. Now, West Australia was found in 1829, so only a couple of years later. So there we go. Yep, that's the king that was before Queen Victoria. This is a really old coin. And thank goodness to our West Australian soil being very non-acidic and very sandy. Um, it leaves them in great condition like this. So that's a really nice... Hey guys, nice high tone in hand. I flicked it out and it's landed exactly like that. Um, a UK military forces button, general service button. That is awesome. That'll clean up. It'll have a maker's mark on the back. Yeah, that's a beauty. That's really, really nice find that. Yeah, happy days. Well guys, all cleaned up now and here it is. Here's the general service button. It's only a small one. Uh, probably World War One. The Aussie soldiers wore these as well as the British. Could be Boer War. Um, yeah, I haven't found one that size. It's quite small with the uh, coat of arms. And I'll show you the other and side. You can see a maker's mark. W Twig & Co, Birmingham. So that is a really nice general service button. Uh, World War One. Very happy. With well, that. guys, dug a bit further in. There was another signal, and look at that. Got a little Australia. Um, I don't know if it's a cufflink or or what, but that is a nice find. Happy days. Hey guys. Well, it cleaned up really nice, and you can see the remnants of the gold gilding. Uh, it's it's brass with uh, obviously the gold plate on it. And what's interesting is it was found near that button, and that button is uh, 1890s. And um, if you can see there, all the lines for the different states, 
there isn't one for South Australia and it dates at Buttonwell uh, so yeah so pre-federation probably 1890s and I'll show you the back guys. And there's the back so I think it might have been a coupling if only I could find the other one that would that'd be really nice um, there you go guys a pre-federation little map of Australia really well, guys down by the river in Guildford where this place has been flogged harder than a racehorse and um, yeah it's got a nice high tone here Graham was digging just there we can see the disturbed ground he got a florin and two pennies I've just come along here and got what looks to be a penny but looks a bit smaller but maybe a bit too big to be a half penny so we'll pull it out Oh yes, it's a florin. You beauty, a silver florin, 1947. Very common date, but that's a cool silver coin. Uh, we'll clean that up later and uh, see how it comes out. That was a good find. Happy with that. Well, guys, got a nice target right here, and I can see the edge of a coin. Let's pull it out. Oh, ram's head shilling, I think. Yep, it sure is. 1961 silver coin, another silver. Awesome. We'll keep going, guys. This is uh, really, really good. Well, guys, unfortunately, I didn't dig this one live, but we got ourselves a silver tripence. 1942. Uh, that is awesome. Yep, that's great. We'll keep gridding this area. Could be more coins, I reckon. Hey guys, well, found what might be the ducks, nuts, or pigeon rings. I don't know what this is, but um, 1993. We'll look into this one, guys. It rang up pretty high tone. I think it's a pigeon ring. That's cool. We'll uh, find out a bit more about that. Well, guys, we're at an old building site here, and uh, I already know what this is, uh, but I thought it was a big piece of brass scrap, which I thought awesome. Turned it over and checked this out. It's a big piece of brass, and it's got writing. As far as I can make out, it says Regis, registered office of the WA Churchman or something. I don't know what it is, but it's old. It's probably going to be 40s, 30s or something. Yeah, that's cool, guys. That's awesome. I'll clean up. We'll find out what Well, guys, the big reveal. I didn't go too overboard with cleaning it, but we did get all the grime off it. And uh, it's 1920s, 30s. And the building, or that this place, ceased to exist in the 1950s. The house we were detecting was built in the 1950s, so it's all dating about right. So yeah, 1920s, 30s, uh, West Australian sign. Nice thick brass one, that is a brilliant find. And uh, we'll try and find a bit more info about the place. Okay, apparently it was um, linked to the Anglican Church, so it would have been uh, priests or... Um, bishops or something like that and apparently the shop front was on Hay Street Perth as well so the other thing is it's got here Cumston's Engineering Hay Street Perth they used to make all the dog registration tags badges and a lot of other things so that's actually really cool and I didn't notice that until I cleaned it so yep still got a bit more research to do on this but um, yeah really really cool Happy well guys vacant block again and we've got ourselves well, I thought it was some type of maybe a plate of an old washing machine or something, but it isn't. Morris Motors, this is going to be a VIN number off an old Morris. Um, yeah, we'll clean that up too, guys. This is a bloody good block block this one. We'll keep going. Awesome. And here's a compliance plate, guys. Came up pretty good. I think it's off a Morris Austin or a Morris Minor, but I think um, about 1950s or the 51 is probably the date. And it's in great condition. This was really crusty, so that actually came up quite nice color of the vehicle was champagne ivory so yeah i might contact the morris car club and uh give it to them if they want or um yeah maybe the cops have to know about it i don't know but yeah it could have been a stolen car back in the day very well, guys sorry about the wind but i've just dug this no idea what it is but i've got a funny feeling that it's a cannon but what that is i don't know um and uh find out what it is guys it definitely looks like a type of cannon and they did have toy cannons back in the day so um we'll try and find out a bit about it i'll give it a bit of a clean up looks like it's gold gilt on there so yeah that's interesting looks like a bit of a watch winding key or something here it is guys we found out what it is it is a cannon or it's a fob watch key cannon cannon 
themed fob watch key which is really cool I did find some examples of these and they were, some were done in like 18 karat gold as well it still has remnants of the gold guild on it let me turn it over yeah so it, really cool there we go guys that's awesome that's a little canon fob watch key well guys we're in local Perth and uh, we're at an old um, convict location um, crown land area and uh, just pulled a big coin out and I think I know what it is being a convict era location that's got to be a 1851 penny brought over it's the Fremantle prison um, convicts that's awesome Queen Victoria will clean that up that's a beauty big coin happy days well guys wire brush only and look at that it came out really good um, yep, it is the 1851. I'll turn it over and uh, you can see, but yeah, pretty much got just a very fine wire brush on it. Gave it a good scrub, and yeah, it's a lot bigger than a normal penny and thicker. It's got some weight to it, too. These things, um, yeah, I'll turn it over. And uh, there you go, guys. It would clean up even better, but I'm just gonna leave it like that. It's got the date down the bottom, it's a bit hard to see, but it is 1851. And these came across in 1852 with the prisoners. Uh, to Fremantle Prison, the convicts. So yeah, really happy well, with that. Guys, right under this tin is an awesome stopper. Look at that for a uh, decanter stopper or something. I don't know what it is. It'll clean up really good. It's a, it's a big one. It'll go nice in the top of one of my bottles, no doubt. Well, guys, I didn't film this one coming out of the ground, but it's a live bullet, mint condition, and on the base, it's got. This is very interesting. It's a German Mauser bullet, and it's got 18. 98. That is super cool. Apparently all these guns were brought back from the Boer War, so I would have had a bit of a um, an iron coating on the head on the projectile, but the actual shell is in great condition. It is live, so we'll get the gun shop to make this inert so we can keep it. Um, that's a beauty. Really happy with that. Oh well, guys, pulled this one out. Nice uh, cork top or whatever and a nice embossing probably common as but it's a nice shape as well um this will clean up quite nice so i'll bring that one oh, guys cleaned up really nice there we go deck cell and it's for upset stomachs and yeah pretty crook a bit of a quack cure medicine um it is around about 1930 or 40s so not as old as i'd hope but it is a cork which which is good and um yeah just a nice shape amber bottle which looks good um yeah nice uh chemist bottle. Well, guys digging along this uh line here and a nice old stoneware just popped out stoneware ink that's the marks where the guy actually squeezed it in and uh, i've given it a rub and yep property of stephen inks that's a really cool old bottle i think it's probably about 1910 and I thought this was pretty new, this area here, like 1940s or 50s, but obviously there's some old stuff here, so we'll keep digging and see what else we can find. Well, guys, here it is. Cleaned up really well. And, um, yeah, this bottle is a property of Stevens Inc. And, um, yeah, I really like that because this is their fingers that would have made that indent to pull the ink out. Very, very crude, but it's been resting up against other bottles in the kiln. And 1910 for this one, no damage at all, great condition. That's exactly how it was made. So, um, yeah, nice ink bottle from about 1910. Hey guys, we have a blue. Oh, yeah, here we go, nice uh, perfume. That's pretty nice. The top's always gone on them, they made a bake light and they just deteriorate. That's uh, pretty nice, that one, nice blue. Cool, well, guys, cleaned up really nice. Here we go, cobalt blue. Couldn't get in there to clean the inside out but um really nice perfume cobalt blue bottle uh would have had a little metal cap on it i think i've found it before with metal caps um but yeah there you go nice little save from the dump well guys i can see a badge that's exactly how i have dug it oh you beauty look at that i'm not sure what that's off but that is cool we'll keep that guys here it is it's a boot emblem of a 1938 chevrolet it needs a bit of restoration we'll sand it back and yeah that's a nice find a little bit wonky but we'll fix it up 1938 chevrolet well guys gave it a bit of a restoration came up nice and that'll go in the collection quite well uh, rear chevrolet badge of a 1938 chevrolet 
Cool. Well, guys, all in this little patch here. I just found three dog rego tags. Super collectible. There's the first one. These will clean up really good. The second one, which I can see a date on there, is 1940. 243 or something I think the Shire of Mora and the last one Shire of Mora again not sure of a date on that one but super collectible dog regimen tags nice and there you go guys uh, that one there is actually 19 1950 okay 1949 1950 1942 1943 there we go guys, some nice uh, dog retro tags. Well guys, gave them a good clean up. They're all from Mora. 1938-39. That one's the 1940s and that one's 1960. I'll turn them over guys and you check out. Well front. guys, just dug this as well. No idea what it symbolises. But it's um, yeah, solid uh, brass. I'm thinking it could be something to do with military. Um, or they're in an area where there is a bit of military stuff. But yeah, no idea on hey, that guys, one. guys, we'll give it a good wash with... Um, uh, toothbrush and detergent and it almost looks like it's got green paint army green um, so maybe military I don't know uh, it's pretty crudely made like almost home cast um, but yeah it looks like an army green paint I don't know interesting I'll turn it over for you that's the back nothing written on there but yeah, as I was saying looks like homemade so I'm not sure what that is. Well, guys, I'm digging where someone left. I'm not trying to film this because there was a really big base to a, a, a bottle. And it took me a while to get it out. That's the base I could see. And it popped out, and I couldn't believe my luck. The English coat of arms, Schweppes. What a beauty. Someone left it, and that was actually exposed. So I don't know why they didn't grab it. But that is an absolute. Happy with that one. Shit, there's more in there too. I think. Hey guys, gave it a good clean up. There's the coat of arms. Um, I'll give it a better clean up. I'm just running out of light now, but you can see the nice embossed UK coat of arms, Schweppes. Um, yeah, not a crack, not a dent, nothing. It is in great condition. Yep, and um, it was a cork top. The cork was actually still in there. And I think, yeah, I'm not sure on the age on this one, but. That was a good find. I'll get some CLR and um, put some shot in there and give it a bit of a tumble and that should get all the crap out of there. Really, really happy with that. Well, guys, got a good signal. And that's how it is. From the lines on the outside, I can tell straight away it's a drive band off an artillery round. Would have been all iron back in the day in World War II. And that's all exploded or, or rusted away. And there's the drive band left. That would have been smooth. And as it comes out of the barrel of the tank, it presses into it and causing it to spin for speed so there we go guys drive band of probably a world war ii artillery round we'll clean this up and see how, see how it comes up well guys here it is and it is confirmed drive band off an artillery shell maybe a 25 pounder all those grooves there from the rifling of the um barrel of the tank or the artillery piece and it's got a lot of the iron left in it from the projectile, whether it exploded or whether it's just rusted away over time. We'll never know, but that is a drive band off an artillery shell. Most likely World War II. This area was known for a lot of World War II training. So that's pretty well, cool. guys, I thought I filmed this, but obviously I didn't. So um, I've cleaned it up now and you'll see it now. This is a nice little pendant I found pretty close to New Norcia, which makes it really special. Um, New Norcia, if you don't know, is run by the Benedictine monks and a lot of stuff got sent over from Spain and um, apparently this is a Spanish pendant I'm not too sure what it means I need to look a bit more my wife did look it up and said it's all got Spanish references I'll just show you the other side and here's the other side yeah really really good condition too so um, probably early 1900s going by the location and the other stuff we found around it but very very cool so yeah probably 1899 to 1910 i reckon quite nice well guys didn't film this come out the ground but i'll show you the way i could see it in the hole and it was sticking out the bottom like that so i knew straight away this is going to be a real early apothecary and i thought 
will have writing on it. Pulled it out. There you go, your typical chemist bottle. It's a nice old applied lip. Uh, all wonky and old. And it's got a really nice colour to it. It's hard to see in here, but it's like a light blue. Uh, so I will keep that and clean it because it is that nice shape of an old 1800s chemist bottle. It's good size and see how it Well, guys, out. here it is. Needs a lot more of a clean up on the inside. Um, it's a real nice blue, actually. It doesn't pick it up at all on the camera. Your typical apothecary and um, really hard to clean the inside, especially up in that corner. So that'll be it for now. And um, yeah, 1800s. Chemist Apothecary bottle, really nice. Happy with that. Guys, I've dug one of these before, and they are very, very special. Um, check this out. Jack's Day, 1924. Can't see it very well there, but there's a ship, and you might be able to see just under the ship. It says HMS Hood. That is a world famous hood versus Bismarck. This is before it was actually um, sunk in World War Two against the. Uh, German ship Bismarck, so that is a good little memento from HMS Hood when they were trying to raise money. Awesome, we'll clean up and see how it comes up. Well, guys, cleaned up really good. Jack's Day 1924 HMS Hood with a picture of the ship. These medallions were sold to raise money when it visited um, Fremantle in 1924. Sadly, that was the last time it would come to Western Australia as it was involved in one of the last great ship-to-ship -ship battles in World War II against the Bismarck, the German Bismarck. Both ships uh, sadly lost, with a lot of lives lost as well. So there we go, guys. Great bit of history, HMS Hood. And, um, yeah, we found this at a private property, and this is going to the owner. He was extremely happy to, uh, for me to find this and cleaned up. He will see the pictures of it very soon. I'm sure he can't wait till we come up and Well guys, sorry about the wind, but these are always really good to find. And uh, that year there, 1943, is um, pure silver. They changed them to half silver in, uh, in 1946. What a beauty. Ram's head shilling. Awesome. Here we go, guys. Came up really nice. There we go. Silver, 925. Silver, 1943. Ram's head shilling. And uh, here's the back of it. Come up really nice, bit of a tumble with CLR. And uh, maybe a two hours tumbling, I reckon. Really nice, happy with it.